What's up guys, it's Caleb, and today we've got some awesome citrus varieties in front of us that we're going to be going through, giving them a bit of a taste and talking a little bit about each one as we go. Hopefully I'll be able to share one that you haven't seen before and give you some insight into some really cool varieties that you can grow. Alright, so this variety here is Vanilla Sanguino and it translates to blood vanilla, it's an Italian variety. Oh wow, such an incredible colour. It's sort of pink, mottled with orange, a really beautiful coloured citrus far out. The taste of these is really unique. It's an acidless orange, so there's no acid flavour at all, no tanginess or sourness like most oranges have. You sort of do miss the tanginess of the fruit. kind of just takes away almost a lot of what a citrus is, but because it is so different, it's still a really cool fruit to eat. I'd almost say that it's kind of like um, a slightly floral taste, almost like rose water or something like that, and there's a lot of sweetness to it as well. Almost has like a slight melony flavour as well, and that's maybe just because it's missing that tanginess. I've heard that people often use these to juice, and I'll mix it with juice from a more acidic orange, and it gives that juice more of a balanced flavour overall, adds a bit of sweetness to the tanginess of other oranges. And as well as that, although their name translates to vanilla blood or blood vanilla, these are actually not true blood oranges, and that's because they get their colour from lycopene, as opposed to other blood oranges that get their pigmentation from anthocyanins. So a little bit different there but overall just a really cool Italian orange variety. Alright so the next one here is a Tangelo Seminole and this one is a non-necked variety of Tangelo so it doesn't have the little neck at the top there. So it's not really one that you would peel uh, like an orange like that. You can do but the thing is that they are so juicy you end up making a huge mess. So we'll cut into this one and you can see here just how incredibly juicy they are. These are incredibly full of flavour. They really make your mouth water because they're just, <laughs> they are so juicy and so tangy. Really sweet as well though. You can see why they're used a lot for juice. But I just like eating these fresh. They're just really um, nice citrusy flavour. And these are a cross between tangerines and grapefruit. And I reckon if you dig deep into the flavour, you maybe do get a slight grapefruit taste. These produce a lot of fruit as well every year. And so you can get a whole lot of orange juice out of these. Alright so this variety here is one that I got from a friend and we're actually not entirely sure of the variety but I've done some research and I've figured out what I think it might be However, do correct me if I'm wrong, if someone knows better. These, I think, are Rangpura limes. Although they look like a mandarin, they are actually incredibly sour and used more as a lime substitute than for fresh eating. And with the name Rangpura lime or mandarin lime, it does suggest that it's a type of lime, but in fact it's actually not. It's a cross between a mandarin and a citron. So the other thing I've read about Rangpura limes is that they're often used as rootstock for other citrus, which means that you'll graft on another citrus to a rootstock that's grown of these limes. And that's because these can produce rootstocks that are quite disease resistant and they're good at growing in salty soils as well. And from what I've read about these is they grow relatively true from seed as well. So if you grow the plants they'll produce fruits pretty much the same as the parent plant. There are I think some differences like the amount of thorns, the amount of seeds, the colour and the texture of the skin can vary a little bit as well. But overall you will get a fruit that's relatively similar from the research that I've done anyway. You can see there's quite a few seeds in here and it's really juicy looking and it's quite a light orange colour. It almost looks a little bit like a large kumquat or something like that. Cut a piece off and give it a taste. Whole room. <laughs> Just touching my tongue it's like intense sour. Whew! That has some punch to it man. Holy. It's actually a really nice tangy flavour. You can see why it's used in cooking and to flavour different things and used in like cocktails and salads because oh, my mouth's watering. It's really tangy, really zingy. It doesn't really taste much like a mandarin, maybe like deep down below the tanginess, but the sourness kind of takes over the flavour. Quite a cool citrus though, something that I'd quite like to grow. And there'll be so many uses for it as well because you can use it just like a lemon or a lime and they'd give a lot of juice and a lot of nice citrusy flavour to, I'm sure, whatever you use them in. Red they can have like a bit of a smoky flavour. I don't think I'm really getting that. It's just really intense tanginess, but it's a good fruit. I quite like it. Next up we've got a couple of mandarin varieties that I wanted to show you and compare. We've got two varieties that will give you pretty much year round mandarins, at least in our climate here in New Zealand. And so this one here is off my parents tree, this one was already growing on their place when they bought it. So we're not 100% sure on the variety but I'm pretty sure it's a type of satsuma mandarin because it's easy peel. As you can see it just comes off really easily, it's really sweet and delicious and it's also seedless as well. Just like that you can see, you know, it's a really nice looking mandarin. 
And then this one here is still a little bit green, as you can see. This is an Encore Mandarin. And the reason it's green is because it's actually not quite ripe yet. And so they do turn this sort of orangey color well before they're ripe. So right now we're in midwinter, and these are more so ripe in spring, right through summer, and even into autumn. So the good thing about these is that most other citrus are ripe in the winter, whereas Encore Mandarins are ripe more in the summer. So it gives you citrus all year round. It's a really prolific producer, just like these ones. You can eat them before they're ripe as well. The only difference is that they're not as sweet. They become really sweet when you get into summer and they're really, really hard to peel when they're not ripe. Whereas when you get into the summer, they can peel off really easily. So the other difference as well is that this Encore Mandarin does tend to have some seeds in it as well. I'll give it a taste even though it's not ripe. I'll tell you what it's like. <laughs> A few seeds. It's just a nice orangey flavour, but yeah, like I say, it will become way sweeter as you get into those warmer months. The main reason I wanted to show you these mandarins was just to talk about how you can, you know, select different varieties of citrus that will ripen at different times. And that way you can spread out your harvest throughout the year and get citrus for a much longer period. This is a Cutler's Red Grapefruit. It's an awesome variety that was selected here in New Zealand and it's one of my absolute favorite citrus up there with lemonades, which I showed you in my previous video about lemons and limes. But yeah, the Cutler's Red Grapefruit, you can see it's got that sort of orange skin or dark orange skin. Really a beautiful fruit and I'll show you how I eat these. I just go right around and just cut the edge of the grapefruit and then just using a spoon, I'll just kind of cut each little wedge out just like that and scoop it out. These are so delicious. If you haven't tried Cutler's Red Grapefruit, give it a go. These are really sweet, really tangy, um, just a nice kind of firm fruit as well. It doesn't kind of just fall to bits. It holds its shape quite well. So once I've eaten all the flesh of these, what I like to do is just squeeze all of the juice into one of the skins and then you get the other one pour it back over and then you squeeze all the juice out of this one as well it's pretty much filled that whole skin full of juice and then you can just drink it cheers damn that's so good and then you can just throw these to your sheet the last one we've got here is this beautiful tree. It's really ornamental looking and it's called a kinoto and also known as a myrtle leaved orange tree. And you can see that it's got these really unusual leaves that don't really look much like a citrus. They're a lot smaller and they look a bit like a common myrtle, which is why it has that name. And I didn't really know much about this when I bought it, but I got talking to one of my subscribers. Hey David, if you're watching, he was telling me a bit about Kinoto and that these are mostly used for flavoring as opposed to being used for fresh eating fruit. And so they make a drink out of it in Italy called Kinoto. Uh, apparently it looks like Coke or Pepsi, so sort of that dark color. So if anyone's over in Italy watching this or anywhere in the world that's tried Kinoto before, let me know what you think of the drink. I'd be quite interested to know what it's like but you can also use these fruits for like jams and infused liquors and cakes and things like that you can eat them fresh but they're not very good it's not as bad as the ones that i've had before probably because that one was so ripe but it's nothing to rave about really at all it's got a lot of seeds in it and also it's got sort of a yellowy flesh to it that's okay like even if you grow it just for the ornamental look i think it's such a beautiful looking tree Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up down below I'll leave a couple of other citrus related videos up here I've got a citrus planting guide as well as a tasting of some different lemon and lime varieties So feel free to check those videos out But otherwise, I hope you have an awesome rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one